Walt Whitman, and uh, you know his comments about baseball, and uh, thank Colleen for presenting those banners. But you know there was a sports just went beyond the field. You know it was just a, a way of life for people back when. So uh, anyway, another thing of major importance here today is a place I think most of us may have either experienced live or heard about, and it's the Dominsky Field. And uh, I'd like to present the artist of the picture. It's uh, Dolores Knudsen, whose father, Jack Jahorik, was a manager and played in the team and ran a business downtown. But she painted this wonderful piece of art. And uh, would you want to share some comments, Dolores? I asked Randy if he could come up with a picture of the diamond and maybe I could paint that. And this was after the first year, and there was no picture to be had. And then the second year that we were planning this, and, or he was really, and, but he had called me up and asked about different things, and I said, have you gotten any pictures of the diamond? And he says, uh, yeah, by the way, I do. Dan Dilla sent me one. I'll send it to you right away. This was like about a week before the, this occasion. And I had in my mind what I was going to do, but I needed something to, to go from there. And of course, this picture that I got was this one back here, which is basically basically home place with a, a batter, a umpire, and a catcher. No, nothing much else to go on. But I could remember the diamond because as a youngster, my dad was involved in all, a lot of the games. In fact, I don't think there was a Sunday that we weren't either going to the Diamond. And at those times, I recall it being called the Pulaski Field because Mike and Josie Pulaski owned that farm at that time. I say owned, but I don't really know if they owned it, but they lived there. And he had a little dairy service and would deliver milk in town and cream and so forth. Anyway, it was at that time called the Pulaski Field. Now this would have been in the 1930s, I'd say early 30s, because I was probably about five years old at this time. And we would, my mother would pack up the car, if there was a game in town, she'd have popcorn and my dollies and my toys, whatever was in the back seat to humor a brat, because <laughs> I wanted to do things my own way. And uh, she usually went early so she could get parked along the first base in that position, because at that point she could see all over the diamond. And of course, I was sitting in the back seat doing my things as a kid would do. Sometimes ladies in neighboring cars would see my mother and they'd come over and visit with her and that would change a lot of things and I could listen to their visiting and, and maybe they had a youngster that came along with them and then we would play. But there was times that that didn't happen and I was sitting in the back seat with my dollies and after so long, especially around the fifth inning, I was getting bored with my dolls. And I wanted to go out and see. I could see other kids running around playing outside. And my mom, no, you can't go. The ball, ball balls might come and hit you. And all of this. And so I had to sit in the car. Finally, after a lot of whining and begging and so forth, she let me go. And I was allowed to sit on the bumper in the front of the car. So I was quite content. I was sitting there. And I, was, I suppose I had my doll with me. I don't know. Because I was crazy about dollies at that time. And uh, I can remember to this day, Clifford Jewell was after a high fly. There was a foul ball or what, I don't know. But he was determined to catch it, I'm sure. And he come a charging for that. And he, with his force and weight, bulged against this chicken wire guard that was around the fence. Well, that stretches like crazy when there's any force put on it. With his force, he knocked me against the radiator of our car. And I imagine I did my share of screaming and crying and all that kind of stuff. He caught the ball. I caught something else when I got in the car. <laughs> Some more cream, screaming and crying. <laughs> but anyway, that's how I can remember the game. There's other incidences, and I'm sure you don't want to hear any more of them. But anyway, as I remember, at that time, it was the Pulaski Field, or Diamond. And then, uh, I believe, Mr. Dominski bought the, field, the property. And then it was called the Dominski Park. And, uh, and now I don't know what it's called, just the f old fireball ball diamond, I suppose. But it, is, it has changed in the, quite a few times around like that. And uh, I don't know, I could go on forever, but I think Randy wants to do some more talking. So thanks for listening to me. My painting, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, 
I can see things that I could have improved on and maybe in a mad moment I will do it again and try to make those improvements on a different canvas. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Dolores, very much. That's what a work of art and uh, to preserve memories like that. And uh, I guess the celebration is basically about sports. It's also about the town, it's about the church. And uh, 20 years ago at the Centennial, uh, there was a contest for uh, essays. And at the time, uh, I was on the committee for it. And I remember we took solicitations for essays to be written about the town. Well, I remember the winning essay, but I never, I remember someone won, wasn't sure who. Well, the second place essay is listed on the left uh, east wall there. Daryl Kritsky wrote it. And I thought it was just a phenomenal work of art to the writing about his memories of the town. Well, it turns out that the number one, the winning essay was by Dan Dilla and our, uh, so anyway, Dan's is also posted there, but since it is a, uh, also a centennial celebration, uh, I think Zach is going to read what Dan's essay, this is the winning essay of the centennial 20 years ago. We'll see what uh, Dan's recollection. Lot were. east of Main Street in Farwell on September 6, 1929, with my dad, mother, and Dr. Groth in present. Actually, I don't remember much of that event, but the following items are still very clear in my mind when I think of Farwell and the many good people who have lived here and who, who still do live here. I remember the 30s, the drought, the dust storms, the grasshoppers, the rolling rushing Russian thistles, good, honest, hardworking people in and around Farwell, not giving up but struggling during the adversity and business and farms surviving only through their perseverance. I remember listening to the heavyweight championship fights in the Baseball World Series on one of the few radios available in Farwell. Shocking grain for two bits an acre, painting countless houses and farm buildings with my brothers and always having to paint the windows in the high places because I was the youngest. I remember scooping snow through drifts over our heads and watching our local professional pitch and pinnacle players play their daily games in my dad's tavern while listening to old timers like Jim Pavlik and Mike Nasiba tell their story of the past and watching them survive to a ripe old age. I remember my dad calling square dances in the old w MWA hall and his treasured collection of professional baseball players' pictures on the south wall, of chasing foul balls on a hot Sunday afternoon, hoping to get a cup ball or broken bat when the Farwell Town team played nearby rival town teams in the Sherman Howard League playing many hours with old baseballs with numerous layers of tape and bats that had been nailed and taped together, hoping someday to be good enough to play on the Farwell Town team. I remember the nuns at St. Anthony's Parochial School. Oh, how I remember them. I didn't appreciate them much as I do now. They gave me the basis for good education. Also going to school in the old wood two-story high school, sliding down the fire escape on a wax bread wrapper to be able to go, go faster carrying coal by the bucket to each room and occasionally slipping in a 22 caliber bullet which would end up in the fire to break the peace and quiet of the classroom, competing in the classrooms with my fellow students, making all of us strive to be better students with this friendly competition. I, me I remember practicing basketball outside in the winter and playing the majority of our games away from home on a team composed of some of the most dedicated players a person w could ever want to participate with playing in the MWA hall, hoping you could not run into the stage, a wall, or worse, the hot pot bellied stove in the corner, winning nearly all our games my senior year and starting a trend that saw the Panthers go to state, go to the state tournament a year or two later. I remember the joy of free movies and the wedding dances with the Good Bohemian Orchestra providing the music in the arcade ballroom, dancing around the water buckets when it rained and the roof leaked. Wednesday and Saturday nights when my farm friends would come to town and we would play hide and seek, run sheep run, and all those good games. I remember playing on the Farwell Town team during the many baseball seasons and the good teams we had and getting an opportunity to play on a team with Albert Horky and his tireless pitching arm. I remember visiting H.T. Jackson and spending six months working with Pete Mudlap before embarking on a railroad career of my own. I remember the compassion of the people in and around Farwell during the passing of my parents two days apart in 1973. 
I will always remember coming back over the years from time to time to find some of the same people and their second and third generations, along with the transplanted people still making Farwell the friendly, hardworking community it has always been. <laughs>
we'll remember this all our lives. We were playing a game at Bolas, I think it was 1947. Milton Esseva, you stand up, please. You can sit down now. Well, we had to dress, uh, change our clothes down near a coal bed in Bolas. Well, Milton was in the process, he's close to the coal bin, and he had his long johns out. He had to take them off, and guess what? The coal came down and kind of covered him up a bit. We had to dig him out. <laughs> a little black, a little black. No segregation there, was there? <laughs> yes, this was a... That sort of started in 1947. It kind of just carried on. I was on the team, fortunately, in 1949. We had a similar record, but we did end up going to Lincoln. Played one game, that was one game at least. But uh, the beauty part of it was the other team that was probably as good as we were, or maybe even better, but we each went into a different district, just six, nine miles apart. We went, each went to a different district. It had to be the town of Ashton. They won their district. We won our district. Guess what? We go to Ord to have a four-team playoff. And guess what happens? The two teams that were nine miles apart, ended up playing for the championship to go to Lincoln. Well, it so happened we won out, and we were the team to go to Lincoln. It was my one or two points, but that was a very, I'll never forget that game. There's some blow-ups or pictures somewhere after the game, after the fans swarmed the floor. Uh, going on a little bit back and up, at that time, too, we, we didn't have a, a place to play. We, we did it that, that year. We did go and then we'd pool our money and we'd go to a gym either at uh, Denebrog or Ashton. Other than that, the games were all away. When I was a senior, all that was done with this school, the stage, that's the only place I was able to practice basketball. We were in an old wooden structure to the south. And 1951 was the first class. So I was 1950. So I was out of the old and didn't get to see the new, but seen it, but didn't get to use it, like a lot of the other guys. But anyway, these guys in 47 set the, would you say the practice, or set the system that they had that witty tradition. It was desire, like I just talked to Dan, a little while ago, during those probably five, six, seven years, we had a coach, if you wanted to call him that. It was all on our own desire and wanted to do better. Going back a little bit to base.